Welcome to the live webinar series. Today we are going to talk about the animation and the uh, human assets, uh, the library parts of the, of the software, and you will learn how to create animated uh, people walking on the street, uh, vehicles passing by in front of the camera. But for those of you who don't know what Arshan XP Live actually is, uh, let me have you a two minutes short presentation before we start digging into the details. Let's see. So today's exciting topic is about adding animated human characters and cars, other vehicles and other objects to the project. Uh, by the way, the project is from one of our users, which we are uh, very thankful for. And I will create an animation like this, what you can see here, it's a 20 seconds short animation where we already have uh, people running around, talking to each other, walking and going into the building and cars passing by and other objects that are animated. So I will also show you how to create an animation like this when the camera is following someone uh, that is uh, walking on the street. So let's see how that goes. I actually have this project. Uh, let me just start with a very, very simple thing. So here I will place uh, from the navigator, from the library, I will place a human. As you can see, you can find a lot of objects here, cars, decorative items and human assets. And if you place, for example, um, Sophia here, uh, you can just uh, rotate her around, refine her position. And then now uh, by simply standing there and, you know, just uh, it seem seemingly she's waiting for someone. So this part of the project is already telling a story by simply just adding a human, uh, an animated human character. So that's very, very simple. So let's see what else we can do, because actually there's a difference between characters here in the navigator in the human library. Let's add uh, one, um, she will be Kala, she is standing here and I'll rotate her around, uh, change her position a little bit and as we can see she is standing there, uh, moving a little bit, breathing and uh, waiting there to be, uh, to talk to someone for example. And let me just add Fabian here. Now Fabian uh, will not, will not move because as you can see there is a difference between the two icons. Fabian has no play icon and Carla has one. So that is a difference between stationary, uh, like statue-like obje objects 
and uh, objects uh, or decorative items or humans that are having this play icon here. Uh, she is by default uh, having a movement here. So let's just go and see what we can do with the object properties. If, if you enable object properties at the left hand side, you will see uh, that she is actually standing in place because the selected animation, the default selected animation is standing in place. If you select, uh, for example, token, she starts a conversation with Fabian. But in case of Fabian, because she is a stationary object, you won't have an option like uh, that you can select her to talk or, or wait or something like that. She will just stand in place. But if you actually use two uh, characters that are both animated as part of this project, let me just place Eric here and let me just place Claudia here like that. And I will just elevate her a little bit to refine her position and I will rotate Eric around by doing like this. And in that case, I can select Eric and Claudia and tell them to either Claudia should listen to the conversation and Eric should talk in that conversation. So with those two very, very simple settings, you can already set up a nice and detailed part of this project from this point of view, which I actually already created an animation. I will show you how to do that as well um in in correlation with the with the animated assets so you can see that these characters are already adding a lot of detail to your uh design and those are actually uh motion captured characters from render people and there's a very very nice and detailed characters either the stationary or the moving ones that you can uh easily uh make part of your project as decorative and uh, living items in your uh, design. Should that be an animation or should that be uh, just a, a, a stationary image that you want to uh, have? Okay, so let's just go back and see what else I can do. I can, for example, um, place manual uh, over here and I can tell him to crouch and check the tires of his car. He is there now and doing that. Or I can just, uh, you know, move him around and let me just zoom into that part. And instead of just simply having people that are only standing in one position, I would like to move him uh, to this location of this uh, pavement. And then I want to make him uh, walk and approach this building and go inside this building. Perhaps he has an apartment here. So I'm just selecting walking. And well, as you can see, that is not enough because uh, um, this character manual only has one place and he does not know the path so you actually you need to define a path so let me just change this back to standing place this is more natural now and I don't even worry about the orientation of uh, manual because that will be automatically solved once you start adding a path animation so you just click here and you start moving this little circle I mean this little sphere and this little sphere is where you will place the so-called nodes uh, for this animation path. The nodes are uh, the representative points of this animation, I mean this path, where uh, Manuel should uh, go through. And in case you would like to turn him over, you should refine the path with a little bit more of these uh, nodes and take care because you can actually click on any sort of surfaces and we don't want manual to walk on the wall so actually just like that and then once you are done you can uh, just hit enter as you are interacted here or hit escape and once you do that eric uh, or so, sorry manual will automatically face this uh, direction and you only need to do is to select walk in and he starts walking with the proper speed because the speed is automatically selected according to what sort of uh, moving animation you select uh, for uh, manual. So let's just change this to, for example, jogging. In that case, he starts jogging and again, he is uh, jogging with the proper speed or you can select something else like, I don't know, like uh, walking cheerfully uh, or uh, walking and texting or perhaps uh, walking and looking around those are all having their own uh, speeds. You can change that. I will show you how that works later. Uh, you can change that, but uh, you don't have to. This is our. Uh, this is all things that you uh, by default have as a ready to use uh, setting. Uh, what else? Uh, for example, uh, what happens if I don't want 
uh, Eric to start from here but from a different uh, location you can select this here and you can just refine the starting position and once the animation is restarted he will start from there you can do this the same thing with another part of this animation path if you don't want to have a node because it is just too complex and you want to make it simpler you just select that node and hit delete on your keyboard and then it will remove that node from that path or also if you would like to you can add a new uh, node into that by clicking on this little uh, cross icon and then you can just refine the position of that node and place it wherever you want so this is how you can change and refine the path once you have uh, created something like that what if i change my mind and i want um, him to come out of the building in that case there is this option here which is allowing you to have a forward or reverse uh, animation or also you can set up a ping pong animation in that case this is the third one uh, when when he reaches the final destination he will automatically turn around and come back and uh, walk this path and then turn around and this is how, what he will repeat continuously as you can see now he is turning around and coming back well I will use this with another uh, animation but I think this is uh, this is just fine now okay so let's add one another character I would like to place for example um, Nathan into this location and he's facing the wrong way but again I don't worry about that because that will be automatically fixed but I define the path and all I do I just define the proper path along this uh, pavement and I don't worry about what happens there because that will be out of frame and I won't create uh, an animation that shows that part so I'm just actually animating him you don't have to place a very very detailed path here but uh, if you want you can also add the curve like this so he's actually um, you know going around Sophia over there and that's how it works so now uh, all you need to do is just uh, hit enter to finish the animation and then uh, you can start uh, a jogging animation as you can see this motion capture animation is very nice and detailed let me just um, you know select something else and then now we can see how it looks like and also there comes a, an interesting situation like for example fast moving characters like him uh, will be very difficult to select later and as you can see well it is it is sometimes it's it's very difficult to select uh, what can I do when I face a situation like that you can add, actually at any time by just simply enabling the object properties uh, panel you can just uh, either stop all the animations like this and then everyone goes back to the uh, starting position or you can start all animations or you can also freeze all animations so they will stay where they are at that very specific moment so in that case it will be much easier to select Eric and edit his path uh, change his animation or even change how the animation works like and I can then individually start him only uh, and check whether I like this animation or not now what I changed actually I want to test whether it works well that he is when he is reaching the end position he should turn around and come back in frame uh, into the animation yeah it works very good and then in that case I stop all the animations and I restart all the, all the animations and then now this is what I will have uh, from this uh, camera from this specific animation this is how it will work uh, like okay but that's not enough because I also wanted to add cars into this animation so I will place two cars one here and another one the opposite direction and they will actually pass by on the street so I will place this car here and I will place the other car oh, let me just zoom out a little bit some place here out of frame so I will just uh, see the car when it approaches the camera when it passes by the camera so let me just animate this uh, hatchback car first I again just add the new path design the path trying to keep the car in lane but if I for any reason fail to do so just as in case of manual I can refine the path and well the rest is not important that's that's enough here and just hit enter and then now this the, the car starts and if but if the default orientation is not good uh, you can do this with any objects you can just you know rotate them or just type a value in this case zero would be great 
and then you can just change the uh, speed which is now in this case this would be like uh, 20 km per hour or so and again in case of the other car I don't need to uh, face the car the proper way uh, because uh, all I need to do is just to add a new path and then later figure out whether the orientation is okay or not let me just uh, make this car going down the lane down the street and hit enter and then you know just refine the position if it's necessary uh, I mean the orientation and the speed now let's say this car is only, only going uh, 15 km per hour it's a peaceful neighborhood and they uh, there's a speed limit here so I'm not using fast driving cars so this is how you can do that so from this point of view once I start recording it I will have a car passing by here and another red car uh, passing by the other way around so this is how it will work like well actually I also uh, have another object that I would like to show you how to animate and there's this uh, nice low mover here but I would like to show you that actually this is something that I have downloaded and I placed it into the my models this is from actually from 3d warehouse so you can use you can actually animate any uh, of the downloaded objects by just simply place them into your design selecting them and do the same as you can see, because this is by default not an animated object, of course there is no uh, pre-selected animation, but you can set a new path. I will design a path that resembles uh, like a shape of an eight, like an infinite loop, like this. This is where this uh, smart low mover is actually uh, going around. So I stop here and I hit enter and then it starts moving with a speed of two kilometer per hour and I can change that. I can. Uh, change the alignment to the path and actually here again if I don't want this little low mover to cross this pavement what I can do I can just select this either erase that or I can just change the position of this path uh, someplace else like for example to uh, this position or to another one let me just select this oh, sorry I made a mistake so I'll just place this somewhere here so I make sure that it is actually not passing the pavement there is one other thing that in case of an infinite loop like this I should uh, not forget to set up and that is the close pass. Now I actually have an open path so whenever this uh, this lone mover reaches the end point it starts, animate, starts being animated from here again. But if I enable the close path you can see that now I have a nice infinite uh, 8 shape, shape of a number 8 and then now it keeps going around and the reason actually it's keep playing uh, in a loop is because this is default uh, the continuous playback the loop playback is by default on for all of the objects that you place so it's a it's something that you can turn off but many times you will actually keep that on you can uh, this way you can turn it on or off okay so this is what you can do with the with the objects and this is how it looks like from this point of view once you start recording the animation and creating an animation uh, I will show you how to do that in the, in the following session but if you would like to record that you only need to click here and then this will all be recorded into a video file so this is how it goes let's see another example So let me show you another interesting video where we will actually create an animation when we will follow Nathan walking around here and at the same time we will have two cars passing by. So let's see what we already know. So I actually select this car and uh, going to the object properties I add a new path. This will be the path. It's a very very simple path. I don't want to make any curves or something into it. It's just straight coming up next to the camera or, or approaching the camera I will set up a different speed and a different orientation like that I think this is already okay and I do the same thing with this uh, red car and I add a new path I will try to keep that in lane it is actually going farther down the street uh, length is not that important because I'm only interested in what happens here so I just hit enter and I again change the orientation and I change the speed if it's necessary this should be a little bit faster perhaps like that okay so this is how I set up the two uh, cars and then I do the same thing or at least something similar uh, with the uh, human character here I just select that 
and zoom in a little bit more like that. Let me just uh, turn the camera a little bit around. And once the human asset is selected, I will add the new path. This will be again very, very simple. Let me just uh, move that around and place it uh, someplace over there approaching that lady on the street. And then I just hit enter. And once the character is uh, already aligned to the path, all I do is just again select the walking uh, animation and he starts walking uh, along this path. So now I also would like to show you how to record this with an animation and how to define that camera animation when the camera is actually kind of following him. So for that, first I will find the initial position for the camera. So I will just uh, deselect everything. So I won't have anything like that. And then let me just move the camera around and I want to have the first frame someplace here so I can see the first building and the location from where Nathan starts walking. And then I add a new animation, a completely new animation. So this will be the first frame. The first frame is where I wear well with the camera when I hit this button. And then now I can add the new uh, frame. But before I do that, I also set up the sun position. So I would like to have a nice afternoon, perhaps somewhere in the spring like this. And uh, okay. So yes, and I would like to match the starting and the ending date. And then I add the new camera. Well, I have two ways to do that. First, I can add the camera here and then I refine the position or I can go to the new location and then I can add the new uh, camera. So what I do now, I just add a new location, which is now identical to the first one. So this is the first one, this is the second one. And with the second selected, I will try to find the best position. It should be someplace here over the cars and turning a little bit to the right like this. I think this will be okay. And then uh, because this is the old frame, I need to, you know, update the current keyframe. So now I have uh, actually two positions, the first one and the second one here, but it's a very short animation because it's only one second by default. Uh, and I would like to make like, a, I don't know, like eight seconds animation. And then once I do that, now it's automatically updated. And if I start, uh, you know, let me just check again the two positions. This will do with the last one. This is the first one. And let's just start playing that, see how that looks like before we record. So we will have the cars passing by, it's nicely, smoothly following him. Perhaps I could make it a little bit slower, uh, but uh, this is how it will look like. And then all I need to do is just to click on this button to generate the video file. So let's see how that uh, whole thing looks like in the end. So this is what we end with, with the, uh, with the animation. So I used uh, animated humans uh, either standing in place or talking to each other, running, jogging. And also I added a few cars. I made the low mover uh, as an automatic uh, path and I also created a following path. So this is how you can do that. Okay, so this is it. This is how easily you can create uh, an animated video with uh, walking people, uh, moving vehicles and uh, such things. So it was uh, part of today's presentation of the uh, user project, which again, I would like to say a thank you for. And I would like to highlight that uh, below me, you can see the link uh, from where you can download the either the trial version or the or the or the purchased version of your uh, live uh, license. And also you can find further tutorials and other materials there if you would like to further immerse into the software. I mean, learning and getting uh, to know uh, what else you can do with the software. Uh, let's see uh, whether we have a few questions here. Uh, let me just uh, go uh, back and see whether I have a few questions here. Yeah, I actually do have. There is one question uh, asking me whether uh, if so, does this work with any imported object? Uh, so the question is uh, perhaps uh, does the animation, uh, the path animation or, the, or any of these animations work with uh, any sort of imported object? 
yes, it is. Uh, actually, if you uh, download uh, an SKP file, you can import that into uh, ArchLine. If you use SketchUp, uh, you can do that as well. Uh, if you use ArchLine, I mean the design software, then you can do the same thing. From there, you can send over the, the whatever you download. Actually, I, I have downloaded a LOM over and there was a, I think there was a, uh, kind of an SUV uh, that is also something that you can animate. So you're free to do uh, whatever you wish and you just place down the uh, object and you set up the path and then the speed and that's it. That's how easily you can animate any sort of object. Uh, another question is, um, yeah, and it's kind of uh, connecting to this question is, can I animate an, a sliding door? Yes, uh, I would say in that case, all you need to do is just to, again, select the sliding door uh, preferably this should be one single object and then uh, with this this sliding door what you need to do is just to you know at the bottom set up the starting point and the end point so that's 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 all you need to do just add a path uh, one uh, another point and then uh, just start animating it with a certain speed like a slower or, or high speed and then if you uh, shut down the continuous playment uh, I mean the continuous playing uh, playing playback uh, in that case it won't always reset but it will play only once and then that's it. So, uh, or you can just use a ping pong animation, but perhaps uh, that's not the best for a sliding door. So yes, you can. Uh, another question is, um, can I use this with SketchUp? Yes, you can. Uh, we actually had a pro uh, webinar about that, uh, perhaps the last week, you should find that uh, in, the, in the webinar sessions. It is uh, called Live Sync with uh, SketchUp. So if you do not have uh, the Arch Linux Speed Design software, but you would like to use Arch Linux Speed Live, which is a standalone uh, Arquist software, together with your existing uh, SketchUp license, you're free to do that. You just download that. You you should also find the Google Ske uh, SketchUp plugin that you can uh, download, uh, and then uh, you can do a synchronized connection. So whatever, whenever your uh, design in SketchUp changes, then you can just upload up the update those changes uh, into the. Uh, uh, design, I mean, the, the Arquist software and with all the changes that you have made with the sound and the renderings and the camera settings and everything will be kept and only the changes will be synchronized there. Uh, a good question comes here. Uh, what happens uh, when I delete the path? Uh, will that erase the character too? No. When you, uh, I think I did that, but if not, it's very simple. You just, you just have a, have a character, you have a, an animation path. And if you click on the little X to erase that path, then the, then the character will be reset to the uh, original uh, position from where it started its path. So it won't get lost. It will just, uh, you know, it will just jump back where it, where it started off and then you can design a new path, so it's a very simple thing. You won't lose the character just because you erase the uh, path. Another path-related question. Uh, can I elevate the node or the full path? Yes. Uh, when you select a, a, a node, that was the little tiny uh, um, sphere, then you have the vertical axis also. So if you would like to change where it should climb something that you later pasted into the model or something like that, you, you can do that. Uh, however, uh, it, you, you should take care of uh, high slopes or something like that. You will, you, you, you will probably end up with, with strange animations if you do a very distorted uh, animated path or something like that. But other than that, yes, you can. And if you would like to elevate the whole path, then instead of elevating the nodes node by node, all you need to do is just to, just as I did, stop the animation select the character and then you will see uh, the three axes appearing if you click on the move node and then you, you can, when you elevate the character the connected path will automatically be elevated together with the character so that's how you do that you can either uh, change the nodes one by one or you can just stop the whole animation elevate the character and that will uh, that will elevate and actually if you would like to you can also rotate the character with its path so that that also works so all sort of transformation works like that and there is, I think this is the last question. Uh, it's the question about, so can I record a smooth video with a low frame rate? Uh, perhaps because it's uh, my last video part was with, it's, it was kind of laggy because I have to stream this, record it, and also uh, do a lot of things so on the same machine and it's a uh, relatively dense model. Uh, 
So the, the live playback during when I was editing the model, it was kind of, you know, uh, a little bit lagging and a little bit lower FPS. But when you record the video, it won't get affected. So uh, the, the video won't consider the real time playback speed. It will record the exact same FPS that you determined to have. I think that's by default 30 FPS, but you can uh, increase it in the settings. You can also change the... Uh, not just a FPS num number, but you can also change whether uh, the resolution should be identical your your screen resolution or something like uh, something different. Okay, so uh, I don't see any other questions. Thank you for everyone coming uh, to see this exciting uh, feature of our Shrine XP Live. We can't wait to uh, release this to you, and you can uh, use it in the following uh, version of the software. Um, until that, uh, should you have any other question, uh, even after this show is not uh, live already, uh, then just leave a comment below. If you liked this content, please don't forget to like us and subscribe to our channel so we can uh, provide any more, many more uh, interesting uh, videos and uh, webinars like this. And you will be, uh, you will get a notification once we publish a new uh, solution or a new. Uh, video uh, tutorial or something like that. So again, thank you for coming and I hope you liked this content. See you next time.